okay, this is an open hypermedia system. What hardware do I need to run it? Uh, any standard Windows platform will do. This particular one, we've got a laser player and, uh, and a uh, source for sound. And what I'm going to show you is the cell biology application. We see that there's a number of areas of uh, darkened text on the screen, which are buttons. And by clicking on these buttons, a message is sent to Microcosm. And in this case, Microcosm has responded to that message by loading another document. OK, so what you were doing there is um, sending a message saying, find something about That's whatever correct. it was underneath the button. In that case, it was and asking for some introductory text, which is what's come up. Right, and the link bases, or these other little mm. modules, are actually generating the extra references. And finally, a viewer will show you the document. In this case, we can click on another button here in this document. And it gives us, in this case, that there are more than one link available. And they have appeared in this box down here, the available links box. And it's saying that instead of just loading the one document, it's giving us an, an opportunity to load whichever document we want. In this case, I'm going to load the Mycons. Mycons are, are visual abstracts of bits of video. Epithelial cells migrate with a broad what those leading lamella. Boxes which that we're seeing over the top. rest of the cell. These boxes Speed are actually buttons in moving video. And we can click on the button and it gives us a choice of available links. So um, that means we are not restricted to actually text buttons at all. No. Nope. We can have video we can have ones as well. Buttons in video and buttons in bitmaps, as I'll show you later. And there we followed the link there to text explaining what ruffling is. I was saying earlier, this uh, application has been used in teaching. Uh, there's a lot of information here about cell biology, and it's not always appropriate to allow users to browse at random through the information that's available. Sometimes it's necessary for teachers to provide a, a, a route, a guided tour through the information, and we call these guided tours mimics. Say we wanted to know about tissue cell movement. We can follow this button to a mimic about tissue cell movement and pressing the start button here brings us up the first document that the teacher intended us to see. Actually we've already seen this document before. Uh, so pressing the next will get us the next one that the teacher intended us to see. But presumably even though we're replaying something that somebody's laid out before us already as a sort of predefined program on, uh, on cell biology we can stop and go down other avenues at that's, any time. That's the whole point, that one's able to browse, follow the, uh, follow the other buttons, but at any time one can come back and press the next button and see the next thing that was intended. What I'd like to show you next is the sort of things that we can do with Microcosm that we can't do with other hypermedia systems. Mm -hmm. This is an application that is used by our history students who are asked to navigate through a large amount of information, much of which is uh, old war office documents, uh, and to answer questions that have been set to them, such as why did the British uh, in the war decide to side with the partisans rather than the Chetniks? So this is the opening document? This is the opening document. And again, there are various buttons in the document. And we can, for instance, follow that button to get a picture of Yugoslavia as it was partitioned during the war. It doesn't look much different now. <laughs> we can actually show that there are some buttons in that, and we can follow the buttons. So we can have buttons in. And we've got some film there, is that? That's, that's actually Micons again. It's a visual abstract of pieces of film. OK. Uh, it would also be an interesting moment to show that we can have links into sound. Archie Jack was a British agent during the Second World War. We have some rec sound recordings made by Archie Jack. 28th of November, the Tehran Conference. Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin agreed to give maximum help to the party. So this there. is a standard and Windows application so well that's playing the sound. Well, that's right, it's, it's supplied with Windows 3.1. Have you heard about the Tehran Conference? And I'll stop that there. As well as having buttons, 
it's possible to have things that we refer to as generic links. The author of the package decided that anyone who wanted to know anything about Deakin would always want to be offered the chance to see this document. So they have made what we refer to as a generic link to this document. Anywhere within the Yugoslavia application, if you highlight the word Deakin and ask to follow link, you will end up seeing this document. But how would I find out that such links were available? Ah. Because it's not highlighted, is because it? Because it's not highlighted, there is a bit of a problem. So one can, for instance, well, I'll take that, that sentence. Maybe one was interested in stuff around there. One could ask to show links, and it comes up with the fact that there is a link on Deakin, and there's also a couple of links on Lees. So this is a tool that's made it possible for us to look for links in documents that don't actually show the links. So choose, buttons. just choose a bit of text and mm. try and find out whether there's anything interesting to follow from that bit. Well, there are yeah. any links in there, that's right. Another thing I'd like to do is to show you what we call computed links. If I follow a link on Albania, I discover that there are no links found. But I'd like to know something about Albania, so I'm going to ask it to compute some links. And this box here has come up this time with four possible computed links. The system has gone away and done a full text retrieval on uh, using an index that was built beforehand and discovered four documents uh, that contain Albania. And the one that contains the most occurrences of it is this document here. So this leads us to, to an idea of a spectrum of links. At one end of the spectrum, we have specific links, as we call them, where uh, there is a particular source, usually made into a button, and a particular destination. This requires a high author authoring effort. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got computed links, which require no authoring effort whatsoever, and are just uh, made at runtime by you selecting a piece of text or a phrase and saying, compute me any links that you can on that. Using whatever retrieval uh, algorithm you chose to. That's correct. I happen to know that there's a link on the word partisan. Ah, oh, this is not a microcosm viewer. This is not, out. not a microcosm viewer. This is Word for Windows. Now, this, is, this wasn't a particularly difficult thing to achieve. We've fired off Word for Windows with a particular data set. And we've come to this document, which is about the partisan forces in Yugoslavia. Oh, well, can you follow anything from here? Right. <laughs> now, microcosm consists of a number of viewers uh, which are aware of various multimedia formats, like we have a text viewer, and we have a, a Windows Metafile viewer, and we have a video viewer, and so on. But we are also able to use, as viewers, various other Windows applications. This is why you claim it's an open system. That's right? why we claim it's an open system. Uh, many applications these days have, are programmable. So we're able to program uh, the application to talk to Microcosm. And that's what we've done in this case. And if I can, there must be lots of words that are relevant. That word yeah, yeah. Tito, yeah. and on the tools menu, we've been able to add the follow link, make link, complete link, make button menu options that we have in the traditional microcosm viewer. So we can ask to fo follow link, and there it's spoken to microcosm, and we can see a picture of Tito and the mic and the partisans. That's a microcosm viewer this time. That's a microcosm bitmap viewer. Some applications one cannot make talk to microcosm. Uh, and as an example of that, I'll follow this link on Lees, which takes us into a guide document. Guide is another hypertext system. And this document, uh, we can open up and look at bits of text. It's possible here that we can highlight a word, such as Mihailovic, and copy it onto the clipboard. And Microcosm has been told to monitor the clipboard. So it wakes up and then Microcosm does its usual wakes thing. up mm. and says, I'm, asking, I'm being asked to follow a link on Mihailovic, and these are the links available. For instance, a picture of, my, of 
Mahalo Ridge. So this is the kind of lowest common denominator. If we can't program the application to talk to microcosm, we can still use it to talk to microcosm via the clipboard. What about applications that uh, can't even communicate to the clipboard, or apparently not, because they're like DOS programs? Ah, well, DOS programs can communicate to the clipboard if they can be run in a window. Um, and as an example, something I have prepared beforehand, <laughs> if you'd like to slip that disk into the computer. What's on there? Uh, earlier today, I went and took some uh, information from the BBC Teletext news feed. And, of course, there's a lot going on about Yugoslavia there at the moment. And I'm going to run up a DOS box. And I'm going to load my file called BBC News Text. This is just a straightforward editor. I'm just using here. a standard editor. And this is what was coming in via the Teletext news feed. Now, even within a DOS box, one can mark an area and copy it to the clipboard, and up comes the bitmap of Yugoslavia. But that's quite a nice example, both of using the clipboard and of showing the, what the real meaning of a generic link is. So we can close that down. Another little device that's worth showing you here is this history device, which shows us all of the documents that we've viewed during this session. This is the bit that enables you to backtrack and that's review right. material that you've gone through before. Right. So if we wanted to go and have a look at this document, that was the one we found about Albania, I think. Yes. But that seems to be lined up just like all the other filters. I mean, it is the way that the history's being recorded, just another It's filter. just another filter. All, all the parts of microcosm are just filters. They respond to messages that are sent, and the history mechanism responds to, to messages that it's, when it sees a document being launched, it records that fact and enables us to relaunch it again at a later stage. Might be a good moment here to show you what it's like making a link. OK, so this is the authoring side of this things. This is the authoring right. side of things. That document, we, we decided, had some information about Albania. Maybe we'd like to go back and find that occurrence of the word Albania and make a link to it. So we get the source document, and we say, make a link. We go to the destination document, put the cursor wherever we want, maybe there, maybe highlight something. And we say, complete a link. And we get the end link coming up here. We'll say complete, and it gives us a chance to enter a description. The description is what will come up in the text box, right. when, so in the available links box. So it gives you an idea of the quality of the link and what's in it. And what, the, what it's about. I'll make it into a button. Right. Now that's gone into a button, mm -hmm. and I can double click on it and it brings up this other document at the place that we put the highlight.